This is a 100 gram go bar. So this is another 100 gram go bar. And as you guessed correctly, today we'll be talking about investing in gold. Three parts to this video. First would be why investors want to consider investing in gold right now in 2023 and how investors can invest in gold. And lastly, how investors can use SRS or CPF to invest in gold. So let's go right now to talk about the first part. Have you clicked the subscribe button? And how about a like? I started buying gold when gold was, uh, I think, 500, 600 per ounce. Uh, at that point of time, I was about to get married. And my husband asked me, would you want to have a diamond ring or a gold ring? I said, forget about diamond. I need gold ring. So I have a gold ring. From there onwards, I've been starting to buy gold. I think that gold should be part of our portfolio. First is to hedge against inflation because the value of gold tends to increase during periods of high inflation. Again, also for a safe haven investment, gold is considered a safe haven investment during periods of economic uncertainty. Especially, there is no counterparty risk or company risk. You can take your gold and sell it and receive a compensation for your gold. Third, I think that we know that uh, during this Israel-Hamas war, at the very moment when you know there was a conflict, gold prices went up. Fourth would be the weakness of US dollar. The value of gold is often inversely related to the strength of the US dollar, making it an attractive investment option when the dollar is weak. Especially that there are a lot of predictions that in 2024, Fed is likely to cut rate. This speculation weakens the US dollar towards the end of the 2023, and then we've seen gold actually moving higher. Fifth is that uh, recently, we've seen in 2022 and 2023 that central bank been increasingly buying gold, with the net gold purchase reaching a record high in 2022. This trend is expected to continue, supporting gold prices to go up. For example, Singapore Central Bank MAS is the world's third largest gold buyer from Jan to September 2023. I think the most common way is to buy physical gold. For example, you go to a jewelry shop and you purchase like a gold ring or a gold necklace. But I don't like this because you still need to pay for workmanship. What I prefer to do is to buy into gold bars from the banks or from the bullion shop. In this case for Singapore, you don't need to pay the GST and now it's 8%, next year it's 9%. But at the same time, you do not need to pay for the workmanship. What you get will be the spot price. The second way is to buy into stocks. Uh, so for example, is to go to your exchange to buy into gold-related stocks. Next would be more speculative means that is to participate in the futures and options of gold. Fourth would be to buy into the ETF exchange traded funds and this is something which I prefer versus if you would buy into let's say a mutual funds because ETF would have lower charges. And lastly, there are some banks that offer gold saving. That means instead of saving in physical dollar, you have savings in gold. And which one do you prefer and which one are you investing? If you are thinking that inflation is here to stay, then as investors, you are considering to invest in gold, then let me just share with you how you can do so with your CPF and your SRS. Listed in the Singapore Exchange is SPDR Gold Shares ETF that is also included in the CPF Investment Scheme for OA Account and Supplementary Retirement Scheme SRS. Then what is ETF? ETF means Exchange Traded Funds. It is a basket of securities that tracks an underlying asset and is traded on the exchanges like stocks. So for SPDR Gold Shares ETF, it's listed on the Singapore Exchange SGX and the underlying asset is physical gold bullion. That means your gold bar, gold coins. Now this means that when you invest in this ETF, you are essentially buying a claim on that gold bullion. The ETF itself does not own the gold directly. Instead, it holds units in the gold pool that is managed by a trust. The ETF then issues shares that represent fractional undivided interest in the trust gold holdings. What this means is that the ETF is a company that owns a vote filled with gold bars. Instead of buying the entire vote or individual gold bars, you can buy shares of the ETF. Each shares represent a fractional ownership interest in the gold held by the ETF. This means that when you buy shares of an ETF that holds gold bullion, you are not actually buying physical gold. You are buying a claim on the gold held by the ETF. The values of your shares will fluctuate based on the price of gold. SPDR Gold Shares ETF listed in the Singapore Exchange is traded in both the USD and SGD counters. The USD stock code is 
087 and the SGD stock code is GSD. The minimum investment is one unit of the ETF. That means you can buy minimum one shares. But for investors that seek exposure to as close as possible to one ounce of gold, then you can purchase 11 units of the ETF, which is equivalent to $2,030 USD as of today, 25th of November 2023. One thing to take note is the expense ratio of the ETF, which is 0.4%. Now, what is expense ratio then? It is the percentage of the ETF assets that are deducted annually to cover the cost of operating the fund. In general, ETF with lower expense ratio tends to be more cost effective and offer higher potential returns. Now, in other words, expense ratio would be the cost that you need to pay for your managers who manage this ETF. Let's take a look at the performance of this ETF. If you had invested in the Go ETF one year ago, then the ETF would have returned about 21.3%. And year to date, it's about 10% for this ETF. And how do investors buy the ETF with their CPF or A account or SRS account? First, you will need to link your CPF or SRS account with your brokerage account. In this video, I've mentioned why and how investors can use SRS for tax planning and to invest as well, and how to link your SRS account to your brokerage account. Essentially, give your reminder or your brokerage firm a call to provide them with your SRS account number and they will handle the linking. Now, three things that I like about this ETF is because number one, it tracks closely to the price of LBMA Gold Price, which is London Bullion Market Association price, which is commonly used by the global gold market. Meaning that if you are purchasing the ETF, then you are having an instrument that tracks very closely to the gold price. Second, investors can invest in a gold ETF in SGD without the need to convert to USD. When one converts to USD and then from USD back to Sing Dollar, there's always a reason of exchange lost, not to mention we need to incur the cost of conversion. And three, it is very flexible because you can buy minimum one share. Today, I'd like to share the price of gold and to compare that with US 10-year yield. Now, why is that? So we assume that investors have a fixed amount of money. If they would want to invest in gold, then they don't have money to invest in, let's say, the US treasuries, which is deemed as the safest asset in the world. If an investor is to invest in gold, it doesn't have returns because if you, let's say, I have a, I have a bar of gold and I keep it under my pillow and for one year there's no return i can only hope for appreciation now if i'm so positive about gold then i would forfeit the amount that i might be making if i will put the same amount of money into us 10-year treasury that might give me like three to four percent per annum or in fact that if you just put this amount of money into let's say a fixed deposit that would give you three to four percent per annum so there would be a very important reason why investors would want to put their money in gold because gold does doesn't have a U. All right, so I have on top here is the price of gold and at the bottom here is the price of US 10-year treasury U, right? And you find that whenever the US treasury U's is at the high and when it's about to drop, the price of gold would be at the low. Now I know that this relationship doesn't always becomes true because not all the time that price of gold is correlated to US 10-year treasury U or US dollar, but on most occasions they do. Let's take a look here at 2016, the U went down at a high point and we realized that that was the low point of gold. And here around 2017, the U went down again and that's the low price of gold. And here the U went down again from a high and this was the low price of gold and here you went down low price of gold and then here again during the 2023 that was the high in you and the low price of gold and we've seen that the you reached about five percent and it starts on its way down and we have the price of gold near to the low point now the question would be whether this high point here which is about two thousand and sixty eight dollars whether finally this time price will break above now one of my argument is that while we've seen that that gold has been moving along this price of 1,100 to 1,003 around 2015 to 2020. But recently, gold has been on the high side. That means instead of moving to the lower side of the price range of around $1,300, gold has been moving in that higher range, which is about 1,007 to 2,000. With this, there's a higher probability that we might see a possible break in gold to come. 
For investors who are thinking of investing in gold, thinking that it could be a hedge for inflation, and as well as to diversify your portfolio, then you might want to consider ETF because of the fact that it can be divisible. Because when you buy a gold bar, you might need to you know spend a few thousand dollars, or in fact, if you look at the current price of a 100 gram bar, and that's about $9,000. I hope that this video is uh, informative to you. And if you would like me to discuss other instruments that you are looking at to invest, such as with your SRS or CPF OA, let me know, leave it in the comment. I'll be very happy to talk about them.